There's always a lot of moving parts to understand when it comes to trying to decipher how the energy market works and how to plan your budget. I'm joined here today with Nick Loris, a research fellow in energy and environmental policy with the Heritage Foundation. Nick, thanks for joining me today. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Um, so Nick, what lies ahead for the rest of 2019 and even as we head into 2020 in the energy markets that our businesses should be familiar with? Yeah, I think from a, an energy production standpoint, you're going to see continued growth in natural gas markets, in uh, higher levels of oil supplies, continued growth in renewables as well, uh, seeing uh, more cost competitive renewables enter the market. There are still big policy questions that are looming over energy markets broadly as to if the federal government is going to intervene to um, bail out some of these uncompetitive coal and nuclear plants that we have around the country, uh, as well as if we're going to see any type of infrastructure bill and how that could impact energy infrastructure moving forward. So uh, you're seeing good movement in energy markets that are going to productively increase supplies and help consumers, uh, but there's a lot of policy questions that loom over the energy market's head. So speaking of energy supply and demand dynamics, what do you forecast for the energy supply and demand outlook? I think you'll continue to see uh, increased use of natural gas, not just in the electricity generation sector, but in industrial use and processes because we just have so much. It's so cheap and abundant. And for uh, energy consumers and energy intensive industries, uh, this has really been a gift. And we're, we're seeing more competition and innovation uh, in those sectors as a result of that cheap feedstock that we have here in the United States. And then also looking to export more energy, which is something that I don't think that the United States thought we would ever be in a position to be uh, exporting crude oil, exporting more natural gas. And so that's only going to continue to increase as developing countries grow their economies and need and demand more energy. So let's switch gears. How does the regulatory environment impact the energy markets and what does that look like for our Ohio businesses? Yeah, regulatory uncertainty can be one of the most crippling things for a business to have uncertainty as to what new regulations are going to come on board at the federal level and at the state level. And so just even the uncertainty of whether a legislature is going to move forward with a, a bill to potentially bail out nuclear plants, for instance, mm -hmm. can chill investment in energy markets and new natural gas plants or new renewable projects, for instance. So um, one, just the, the thought of this uncertainty is problematic, but then the policies themselves can be problematic if you're talking about policies that distort energy markets and artificially increase the costs for negligible envi environmental benefits. Uh, you know, we, we certainly want uh, clean air and, and clean drinking water, and we want to have environmental protection and sensible regulations. Uh, but at the same time, you don't want regulations that are devoid of any meaningful environmental benefit that can choke off investment in new energy projects and increase costs for major energy users as well as households uh, in Ohio. Mm -hmm. So lastly, energy efficiency trends. What's changing? How do we continue to make the business case for, for renewable energy sources and overall energy efficiency? Yeah, I love talking energy efficiency, uh, which is very nerdy, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's one of those things that I think makes the business case for itself because mm -hmm. businesses and consumers have an inherent incentive to save money by investing in energy efficient products. Uh, part of the challenge is that there's information asymmetries and gaps, and so you know, there are companies that go out and, and perform those energy audits that help people realize the savings that they uh, can accrue from investing in more energy efficient technologies. So I think it's really about ensuring that we have the right access to information uh, so that businesses and consumers can respond to the price signals that are out there so they can invest a little more upfront to save money down the road. And the, the same is true with renewables. You, you've seen the costs come down tremendously right. and now they're becoming economically competitive with other sources of energy. And so this isn't just an environmental decision, it's an economic decision and that's ultimately what you want to see drive uh, policy forward and investments forward is policies that are consumer driven first rather than kind of mandated and dictated from you know, regulators or policy makers. Exactly right. Well, so energy plays a central role for every one of our businesses. We all have utilities and how you strategically manage them is up to you. But our team along with Connect Energy is here to provide insight and expert guidance. Thanks for joining me today, Nick. Absolutely, thanks for having me.